Okay, we are ready for our final coach of the night, Coach Daly. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Right here, second row, middle. I don't hope you're doing well. Um, I guess as you kind of sit about a month out from the season, how will you evaluate that point guard position and what's that competition look like right now with Zion and a couple other people? Um, I mean, it's, it, we got the various um, – experience. I mean, Zaya has been doing, you know, some heavy duty playing the point. Um, uh, Raven Johnson's coming back um, and she's coming back fairly nicely. Um, and then we got to get Kiara Fletcher into the into the fold. Like she's she hasn't really practiced um, consistently. She's got a couple of nagging injuries. But once we get her back to full tilt, um, then it could be a, you know, a, a pretty uh, I can evaluate a little bit better. But, you know, we have to go with the healthy bodies that we have. And um, Zaya is doing a great job. Raven, when she's in, and she, she, she practices the entire time. It's just she doesn't get, you know, the reps, like every rep. She doesn't do every rep. She de probably does about 75 to 85% of practice. But we got to take her out because we don't want to, we want to lighten her load, you know, before we're able to play her full time. Right here to the left. Hey, Don, you mentioned a couple weeks back that there was a year where you felt the journey got stale throughout throughout the year, and then. But you also mentioned that you feel feel like this team has kind of created a championship behavior. Um, how have you seen that evolve over time? And do you, do you worry about the journey getting stale for this group at all? I do. It's it's a big worry because um, once you, once you've won and you re, you return basically, you know, almost your your entire team. Um, you, you tend to you tend to want to take the uh, the beginning part of it, the journey, the 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 meat and potatoes of the season um, lightly. I mean, they haven't had they haven't shown signs of it, um, um, but we haven't really been healthy, healthy either. We've 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 had our most successful seasons when we've been healthy, so we have to get healthy. So the, the challenge in front of us is getting healthy right now, and then we can evaluate a little bit better. But certainly it's, it's, in, it's on my mind and in my heart to keep this team engaged and challenged um, every day that we're, we're out there practicing. Right here. Gabriella Lewis, the next. Um, in the past couple of weeks, um, what do you feel like the differences are from the beginning of this season to the beginning of la from the beginning of last season? I mean, obviously there's a championship in, in mind, um, but when you go into the season, where do you feel like it differs from the last? Um, one is just we've always been very healthy. Like we're able to just play how we're going to play. We can establish rotations. We can establish a point like a starting five. We, we can't do that as of yet because we, we're not completely healthy. Um, and I, I just think that with this particular team, I, I don't want to, like I'm a feeler, like I, I feel certain things. And they, they may not necessarily be doing this, um, but I feel like I have to challenge them a lot. Like, but I also feel like we're not healthy enough for me to challenge them because we – you know, we, we, we don't have a, our, our full roster at full strength. Um, no, but they're focused. Like, they come in and they work extremely hard. But it's hard to, to gauge where we are because we don't have a full-time point guard. I mean, Zaya plays it, but, you know, her – the strength of what she does has been always um, on that, that two-guard slot. Hey, Coach. Hey, Lou. Stedham, WHEP. Coach, when you uh, have some challenges as a coach, who are some of the people you might reach out to for advice? And then you, you're speaking about another championship. Yeah. Have you spoken to anyone in another sport who's faced that same dilemma? Yeah, I, I haven't. Um, I, I think what we do, I mean, I, we have a wealth of experience on our staff. And we, we talk about everything, like we, um, we have knockout dragouts as to where we think our team is. Um, so we, we, we do it within. Like nobody knows our team better than the people that are around us every single day. And our staff is, is pretty darn good for a reason. 
and they get paid a lot of money, so they're going to have to give, give up some information, like what they're seeing, what they're feeling, and we have, you know, we have healthy discussions. Back here. Don, you mentioned trying to figure out a rotation a little bit. It seems like you're pretty littered at that forward spot. How do you go, where do you feel like that yeah. is right now, and how do you go about defining that rotation a month, yeah. a month before? It's hard. I mean, it's hard. We, we've been playing uh, Victoria Saxon at the three a lot in practice because um, we, we don't have as many guards as we, as we usually have. So she's filling in nicely there. Um, and then our, you know, our, our front court is, you know, it's, it's a lot like you know, it's, it, we have more post players than we do guards. Um, but the great thing about it is everybody's better. Like Camilla is a totally different player than she was last year. Sanaya Fagan, totally different than she was last year. And then you add Ashlyn to the mix. Um, Watkins, I mean, I've never had a, a freshman that has come in as physically prepared for the rigors of a, a college basketball season um, like she is. Um, so, you know, the good thing about it is we can, we can play a, a, vers a very versatile lineup um, because of our experience. Vivi can slide over to the three easily because she knows it, she's been around it, she's a pretty good defender, she's smart, um, she communicates. Um, same with L.A. You know, L.A. can, you know, play one through five for us. So, and we've we've had her playing that, so it's it's nothing new. So, um, you know, is it a more traditional lineup like we've had? No, but um, sometimes you got to piece it together until you get completely healthy. Here in the front, and then we'll go to you. Um, the SEC has only gotten more competitive in the last year. Uh, can you talk about even though being at the top of that, how's that feel, and knowing that for strategy in interconference play? Yeah, I mean, it it, it feels. I mean, it feels like we, we got the target on our back, and we, it feels like people, uh, our league is a lot better. You know, coaches are great. Um, you know, we get transfers coming from other conferences to our conference that strengthen our conference. Uh, we're, you know, we're, this league prepares you to win national championships, so people have gotten better. So it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to catch anybody off guard. We're not going to catch anybody off guard. And the, and the teams that have gotten better, they're not going to catch anybody off guard. We know that every time we step on the floor, any of us, any of us can lose to any of us. Um, so it just feels like the, the, the norm in SEC play. Right here, second row. Coach, you talk about the idea of not wanting this particular team and the players to get stale. So I wanted to know, like, just based off the first few first few weeks, uh, what have you seen from, you know, players like Camilla and Sanaya and Aaliyah just thus far? Um, I, I see everybody has gotten better, like, like noticeably better. They feel better. They are more confident. And they, they are creating – they're creating problems for us as coaches because we got to play them. We've asked them to improve. We asked them to come back um, in better shape. Um, with a better, with more mental strength, with more physical strength, um, and they've done that. So now it's on us to figure out what what combinations that we can play to play all of them. I mean, we are incredibly heavy on, in the in the front court with players that can play a lot of different positions. So I mean, we're we're a month out. We're gonna have to figure it out, but it's it's hard, and that's a good thing. Right here, second row. Uh, whether it's on the court or off the court, what's something that has surprised you about your, your two true freshmen, uh, Talasia and uh, Ashlyn? Um, I just mentioned about Ashlyn. Like, Ashlyn is, I mean, incredible athlete. Like, she's super smart. Like, she doesn't, she doesn't move like a freshman. She could, she could probably communicate a little bit more, but that will come. You can push her. She's very, very coachable. Um, just highly intel intelligent, and she's got a really good feel for the game. Like, I, I just think the sky is the limit for her. Like, like, every day she does something and you're like, you know, it's not like, you know, Aaliyah Boston leaving 
the cupboards won't be bare because of, you know, our contributions that we're getting from some of our younger post players. And then Talasia Cooper, um, Talasia's just in a different position. Like, you know, sometimes we're playing her at the point, that's hard, that's a freshman. Sometimes she got on the wing. So we, we're giving her a lot of responsibility and sometimes it's, it's, it's too much for her. So sometimes you gotta slow her down and just put her at, at one position for her to get really good at that and, and, and confident because as you know, she's, she's up, she's down. Um, it's hard, it's hard, um, but we need her, we need her to give us something. But she's super talented, like she can create her own shot. Um, she's got great court vision. She just has to know when and where to apply those things. Up front. Um, you know, with last year's win as well as also just the fan growth exploding, does it feel like South Carolina is knocking on a dynasty? I don't know. I don't even know what a dynasty is, except you know what what UConn has done to win as many national championships. Um, I mean, to be a dynasty, I, I do think you gotta you gotta have a little back to back championship in you. I, I do think you have to you you have to have sustained success in your conference um, and the type of conference that we have. Um, so I don't know. I think we are. We we are in, our program is in a good place where we're able to attract some of the some of the best talent in the country and it starts there like it starts with really good players that that are unafraid to come to a place and have to compete night in and night out and get better so when it comes to attracting the best um, it's dynasty like um, it's dynasty like I don't I don't think that we can we can deem ourselves that just yet. Right here in the middle. Don, you mentioned having to challenge players sometimes and keep that in the back of your mind. What goes into challenging them? What does that look like when you're in a practice or in a team meeting? Um, it looks like, it looks like, it looks like, it looks, it, it's different. It differs from player to player. It depends on what we're trying to accomplish. Like I would, I recently, um, had a player sit out of practice or stand stand on to, over to the side. Um, and it wasn't a knee-jerk reaction. It was, we don't want to practice bad basketball. We just don't. You just don't want to practice bad basketball. Um, so I just I got impatient with her um, after, after a few weeks of bad basketball. So you got to sit and you got to watch it. You got to want it. You got to force yourself to play a little bit better. Um, so it looks like that at times, um, or we'll shrink, you know, we'll shrink, uh, the op we'll shrink opportunities for our, our players to be successful. Like if you got three possessions, then something, something's good got to happen in these three possessions. So, um, it is that it is like, you know, if Zaya, you're playing the point guard position, Hey, let's not turn the ball over three trips down. Yeah, let's get good shots. Let's, you know, let let's have you manage our basketball team. You run it. You tell people where they need to go. Um, you manage the huddles. You know, you can change our defenses if you want to change our defense. It's, it's things like that that just challenge them to be better and to embrace what position they're playing at that given time. We got time for two more questions here and here. Could you speak a little bit on the NIL, you know, being in women's basketball, basketball for a long time, how that's changed the game, the opportunity it's brought specifically to women's sports? Um, and then also, can you speak on the uniform deal that all South Carolina players are, are entitled to? Mm. Um, the NIL space, I think, is great. Like, I, I mean, we as coaches have to take on uh, this space just like it's excellent Owen. Like, it is. It's, it's a big part of – what we do is um, to to create um, women who are prepared in in this space, prepared to be great business women, um, prepared to find represent, great representation, to lean out their their daily lives. Um, it is finding opportunities for everyone to benefit, like all team deals. We as coaches have to do that because you'll have. You'll have a locker room in which you got the cream of the crop that's benefiting, and then you got the pay, the players who don't play as much looking at that, and it may cause some dissension within the locker room. So you got to protect your your 
your the sanctity of the team when it comes to that. Um, and what was your second question? Um, just how it's affected women's sports. Oh, I mean, it's great. Like, it's great. I don't know what the numbers are on our campus, but Aaliyah Boston and Zaya Cook are making a lot of money. Like, they're making a lot of money on our campus, and um, our success has a lot to do with it, and their play has a lot to do with it, and their representation have a lot to do with it. So, and it's, it's a part of our game is a part of us being coaches and making sure that they, you know, they're, that they're good. I, again, just protecting the sanctity of the team. Um, I mean, there are rules around it. Like, you know, we're not going to go on the road and our players can do an autograph sign on the road. We know, you know, that's not it. You can, you know, you can compartmentalize when we're at home what your schedule should be. But when we're on the road, we're, we're going to stay focused on that. So it's, it, it's cool. It, it's one dimension, another dimension to helping them become um, more equipped with handling life outside of, you know, outside of basketball. Richmond Weaver, 1049 Fox Sports Upstate in Greenville, South Carolina. And you talked about challenging players. What about you personally? How do you challenge yourself to fight complacency or battle complacency? Um, I, I challenge myself. I, I, do, I Like right now, I'm intermittent fasting. Like I eat from 12 to 8. I, I don't have very long right now to get some dinner in. I, I do I, – I, I challenge myself in that way because I ask our players to sacrifice. Um, and for me, that's, that's, a, that's a big sacrifice. Um, our, our staff, we give up fried foods for the season once we start official practice. We do have two cheat days before December 31st. Um, so it, it, it's, it's that, you know, and then, you know, I challenge myself to, to really watch our team, like watch, watch, watch a little part of us every day to see where we can get better, um, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm really focused on our team. Like I'm focused on, you know, there are not very many teams that, that have repeated. We want to be in that number and it's, it's, We've never been here in our program. Well, yeah, we have. Um, the first time around didn't turn out too good, so we want to be better than we were the first time around, and we probably we got a lot more fire firepower to do that. So, I mean, that's that's the way I kind of challenge myself to be better, and I'm hungry, but I'm better. <laughs> do you? That's good. That's good. That's okay, it. Thank you. Coach. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the coach.